So today I have the very esteemed honor to present our latest muse, Soraya. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, today has been a a great day. It has. A early day. A early day, but a great start for sure. I want to commend you. First and foremost, your call time was seven a.m. <laughs> And you got well. here very close to call time. <laughs> you got here almost before me. So <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, you know, it's in this business, it's always like a, a tug and pull of trying to get everybody on the right page. So you have made this day super easy. I appreciate that. Your team is definitely A1. They're great. They're great. Except for the photographer guy. <laughs> Sean. No, I'm just playing. That's crazy. <laughs> so... To introduce you formally, um, tell people where you're from, first and foremost. Um, well, originally, is there a place I'm supposed to look? No, or just no, with you? Just talk okay, to, cool. Talk to um, yeah, originally, I am. I was born in Encinitas, um, California, um, which is like very, very south California. It's basically going to San Diego. Um, a lot of my family is are from um, Oceanside. Uh, California and um, yeah from there we kind of traveled north to LA to the valley and I spent some time also in Atlanta growing up so kind of like a little bit of everywhere <laughs> a little bit but but yeah that's that's where I'm from so pick a coast I know this is early west coast or east coast which, which one is preferred <laughs> for me right now I love the east coast me too I I even love like New York, even though it gets super Same. cold. Yeah. Um, but if you ask me to go to New York or go to California, take me to New York. It's crazy, it's hectic, but it feels like people, everybody has a dream, everybody's doing something. So it just kind of keeps me moving. Yeah, it does, it does. How do you think moving around so much, being from California, going other places, how did that kind of help make you who you are? Um, I think it was impactful in so many ways, like just, being okay with um, adjusting and and kind of being okay with people being different. Um, um, I went through those moments of like culture shock for sure, um, going from LA to here. Uh, so I, I definitely have experienced that. But what I can say is I do believe it's made me a very well-rounded person, and I'm not I'm not afraid to see what's new or to try something different. Yeah, um, and I'm from, I'm from Albany, Georgia, which is like a super small part mm -hmm. of Georgia. Um, and so many people from my hometown, great people. I wouldn't trade where I, where I was born and raised for anything, but so many people never leave. And I always tell people, like, you know, when you get, if you can't leave until college, go somewhere far away. Go somewhere from your comfort zone and try a couple places out, study abroad, do everything for you to get more exposure. And I think exposure is what really makes people super well around it. And you kind of break down some of the, the obstacles you have in life. Because so many things that we have going on is about people not understanding other people because they just live in their own little box. So moving around helps a lot with that. Very true. Um, when did you know you wanted to be a performer? Oh, since, I mean, since I could remember, honestly. Um, I remember um, just always loving music and movement. So my mom put me in dance at a really early age. Um, and from there specifically, I had went to a Destiny's Child concert uh, uh, when I was like five. I team think five high. or six. Team <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I was just so inspired and moved by, um, well, at that time I didn't know, right? Like the message and all this stuff. So I can't even cap, but I'm going to say like the feeling I got. I was moved by the feeling I got, and I quickly um, was very influenced by what I saw mm -hmm. and me already loving music and dance. I was just very star-eyed looking at them perform earlier in their career, and um, they were women, and it was just, it felt so empowering. Mm -hmm. So I, from that moment, I was like, okay, I want to do that. And, and yeah, that's kind of like what sparked the specific dream. And that's and we're, we're we're close to age, and I think that's one of the things I love most about our time of growing up is you could center focus on things. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't have nineteen different outlets, and, <laughs> you know, nineteen different. You know, you might have grown up at my house. You had one TV in, in the middle of the living room that everybody sat around and watched. 
B B T Awards and Beyonce and Destiny Child. So like growing up, you could focus on, hey, this person is great. This is what I'm inspired by, and yeah. I just want to lean into this. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. Like, there's so many different artists and and um, actresses and actors that I've grown to really love from a young age, and they kind of like inspired my whole journey um, into wanting to become what what I am now um, and more. Right, so it's been really cool, like finding my own compass within it, um, because you can like get inspiration from all these different places and then make it your own. So I'm gonna start, because I'm Team Beehive, I'm gonna <laughs> get this out the way. Favorite Beyonce album and favorite Destiny's Child album. Dangerously in Love. Um, Destiny's Child album, I just say Writings on the Wall. Writings on the Wall. Yeah. I I'm like, I love the classics. I, I love like the, the classics. classics. And I love Writings on the Wall because, and Dangerously in Love, because they kind of get lost. Because Destiny's Child did so much after that. They yeah. had member changes and all yep. these different things. Mm -hmm. And then Beyonce did so much after that that you forget. Like, that first album had a lot of B-side <laughs> classics. It wasn't mm -hmm. like now where everything is a single or everything is for playlists. Right. Another one of my favorites is Lemonade, though, too. I really loved Lemonade. I liked it. I felt it was, like, different. And, you know, from what I've known of her, um... It was a little deeper, you know. I, I appreciated Lemonade too. I'm a Jay Z stan. Mm -hmm. So I heard, I was like, that was one of them times where you trying to just gotta shut up and listen, because you're like, you can't defend, it. couldn't defend it. But <laughs> Lemonade is amazing, and I think that's the first one where she did like the full video album came out right. of HBO. Yeah, I watched it. I think it was a Saturday. Like it was a, it was a thing. I'm clearly in the Beehive, so. <laughs> you know, same, like, yeah. same. <laughs> um, so then, how did you get into acting? So. Um, well, I have always wanted to do that too. <laughs> I um so when I was like in 4th or 5th grade, I would take like weekend classes at Millennium, this dance studio in LA. And um I would do Saturdays and I would do you know, tap, hip hop and vocal. So I was doing everything and um I just really got into the theatrics from there. Um, and I started taking other workshops um, as much as I could at that right. time. Um, but other than that, honestly, like I was just a kid sitting at home, like you said, in front of the TV, looking at Disney's channel and Nickelodeon. And at that time in the 2000s, it was like those shows were really, really big. It was making those channels, those networks really, really big and popping. And it was like, I want to do that too. <laughs> like, I want my own show. I want the Disney wand and all that. I wanted all of that. So um, it was just all things entertainment, all things creative. That's where I was. The funny part is like, at that same time we're watching these same things, I was looking at that like I want to make those. I That's never dope. wanted to be wow. like in front of the camera. Like I was, I remember watching Brink and Johnny Tsunami and all of these Disney yeah. movies and the Mickey Mouse Club and all these different things. And I'm like, I want to see how they're doing this because back then it felt like Disney was just, and we was kids. It just felt like they were doing everything better than everybody. Literally. And then I eventually went and interned at Disney when I got to what? college. So I like got to learn all like the. The production secrets and the marketing secrets and how meticulous they are about every single step of the Disney show process. Mm. And I'm like, this is what I want to do somehow, some way, whether it's writing, producing. Mm. And, I, you know, you don't know what the role is. You're just like, I want to learn how to do this from behind the scenes. So it's funny that things just grab you like that. Yeah. Um, favorite actress? Oh, come on. Oh, gosh. Okay. I have a sleeper. I like sleepers. Regina Hall is my favorite. My I love favorite Regina actress. Regina Hall. She's great. I think I like finding kind of like the gems in it. You know, it's a lot of great actresses, a lot of great actors, but I like finding those who kind of take the movies they want, take the projects they want, and, you know, don't always have to be like the biggest role, but they just leave their mark on everything. And I think her and Taraji, they always just kind of find amazing roles and make them their own this that's very true um and i do appreciate that about like even before i got in the game right like they're old they're older than us and um they come from that that generation where or that version of film and tv that um it's about 
the projects you do and not that it's not anymore but i just think there's just so much so content much. now it's it's not the same um metrics i think that they use but they definitely pick some really great roles so you almost need like playlist true. systems for movies too literally or tv shows like who has the list of like the stuff that we need to be walk watching next year or this fall because i'm like man everything is on paramount and this show and this network and this network it's hard to keep up with it so it is it's really hard it's hard to keep up but you know like i try to keep up with like actors so like i'll type in julia roberts mm -hmm. and then i'll see like what they're doing or you know um another one of my favorites is regina regina king mm -hmm. i love i Shirley. love her yeah right i love her arc and like um, all of the different films that she's also done too, and TV shows. She was in a really shows. great TV show um, that I appreciated. Own so. Das Legend. Oh my God. Own das and then Legend. that, like her versatility is crazy. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, you know, you said how you, you took a lot of classes. Your parents, your mom kept you in a lot of different things. Do you think that helped you become more as obsessive about your craft, being that you was being kind of pushed into things or do you think you was like mom I need to be in this I need to be in that and you was more so making sure you stayed in things um I was always the kid like I want to do this I want to do this I want to do this um yeah it was if it was up to my mom she wouldn't do any of this <laughs> <laughs> she's, like, she's the complete opposite <laughs> of me um so I was definitely like please can I go do this or please can we I was like asking to take headshots I was like asking to go do like i would see um i feel like oh i kind of feel like i was about to say back in the day that's kind of weird um <laughs> i feel like um there used to be like on the radio there would be like these like casting calls like little like mm -hmm. uh commercials yep. like oh we're looking for you know such and such show for yeah this saturday yep. come audition whatever so i would hear those types of things and i'd be like oh i want to go do it like so bad you know i would ask my mom to do stuff like that um and actually i did do that i i auditioned um to be a part of the kids sonic dance team wow yeah there was like hundreds of kids it was like 400 kids it was crazy i had the like the number on the front it was like so serious Contestant 87 yeah i didn't make it but it was uh, cool you know <laughs> gotta, gotta send, that, send that new number there yeah. um but yeah there was just so many moments like that that was really cool as as a youngin and i definitely was begging i went i didn't want to go to school i was like why do why do i need school i just I need to like, go i just need to go do what i want to do like i'll do homeschool like who cares about school um but that's my, an la thing or california my, well, thing yeah and, and you see it more you know mm -hmm. like it's it's more i guess normal um and my mom was just like no she's school advocate so i went to school so speaking of school you went to taft high school the Growing as an athlete, a fellow athlete, we picked high schools mm -hmm. by the, the basketball team. Mm -hmm. Did you pick your high school by, you know, this Taft has these legendary alums who did all these different things? Or did you pick it based on your career path or was it more so this is where I live? No, it's just this is where I live. Oh. <laughs> I wish it was like that you made decorated. The top, but... You made the top alum <laughs> list. I was doing my research. <laughs> I know a couple of the basketball players that went there. Did I? Um, Dang, I, I want to see that. <laughs> what's the guy, uh, Victor? Um, uh, he played, he was in Entourage. I can't say his name. Uh, Valdemera or Waldemar? Oh, I didn't even he know he went to He went there too, so wow. it, was a, it was a list of about 30. He was on the list. I, well, I'm honored. Wow, I, I need to see this list. <laughs> but um, I do know that there was a lot of people, when I got to that school, I heard, you know, that there was a lot of people that came from there. And then obviously by the time I graduated, um, I know a lot of people that went off to NFL, NBA, all types of stuff. So, yeah. It's it's kind of magical in that way, I guess. It just happened. Yeah. Well, I, I have a thing that talented people normally find spaces of talented people. You hang around what you want to be around. Yeah. So sometimes that's on purpose, and then sometimes it's just like, like in Atlanta, East Atlanta kind of has created this culture of like all these talented people, and I think they just naturally inspire each other. So that builds up that area. So it's probably the same way with where you grew up at. Um, shifting a little bit. I looked up, I like to try to figure out where someone's run started because it's always so much stuff before the run. So technically, according to my search, you're approaching 10 years. 
of being professionally active. Mm -hmm. Starting in 2015. <laughs> How fast has that 10 years gone by? <laughs> it feels weird to hear it. Or um, does it feel like 30 years? No. It feels... Well... Time has been weird lately. I feel like it's been, like, really fast. Mm -hmm. um, but... I can say it's, I feel like it's pretty much flew by. I, I used to feel like 10 years was this big, like, mm -hmm. moment. And now I'm like, whoa, 10 years is really not that crazy. Like, it can come like that and go like that. So, um, And I feel like we lost two years. Yeah. Pandemic, so. Yeah, so that was weird. But um, I definitely feel like, I feel like I'm in a place that I, I, I want to be in, mm -hmm. um, but there's so much I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's kind of gone by fast, but I've definitely grown up um, in it in a way um, in the industry. So I think that like the, the seasoning is there, but mm -hmm. there's still so much more to be done. It's like, it's like I'm in chapter two. Even yeah, it's, it's, it's not years, even, like, yeah. It's, and time, there's it's like, time to start so much more. Yeah, exactly. Who do you look to? Um, you know, this uh, the title of this is Muse. I don't, we don't use, we don't pick anybody for Muse that don't inspire us. So, you know, this is amazingly talented. Women is amazingly ta beautiful women. One thing me and Sean make sure we do is we sit down when we're going through potential people and we want to be actually inspired by that person. Who inspires you, especially with all the noise going on when you need to kind of go somewhere and find some inspiration to lock in like an artist anybody oh um creatively but whoever is like your bar like i love what this person is doing i want to check this what this person is doing oh man um i i kind of do these like deep dives into um artistry from mm -hmm. like different artists so i like i'll go back to when beyonce had her first tour mm -hmm. and like just watch that live um because it keeps a level of growth in my mindset because nowadays people forget about growth mm -hmm. and people forget about the time invested into a craft or into anything that you're doing um so it keeps me kind of grounded when I get to go back to Janet Jackson's first tour. Yep. And there's no glitz and glam. It's just a curtain and like her and her band just jamming out. Yep. Yeah. So it allows me to like stay grounded in the fact of like, okay, cool. There is a starting point for everything you do. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, that definitely locks me in and gets me very motivated. I mean, I love to look at like old Madonna, old like, jazz singers and I, I pull from so much there's choreographers that i look at from like the 50s and 60s the documentary section probably looks like mine I love <laughs> watching yeah older content yeah, yeah yeah so there's i do so much of that all the time but i could say like that's what keeps that's what gets me locked in and keeps me locked in is like being able to kind of time travel and yeah. understand the journey of like those that i look up to now because if you look at them now, it's like, okay, yeah, complete package <laughs> it's so now. grand yeah. and it's mm -hmm. so like perfected, uh, rightfully so. But you know, it, it allows me as a creative to understand like, okay, there are steps, there are avenues, and there's like so much work to be done. Yeah. Yeah. I, w I watched, uh, this is, what's today, Thursday? So maybe three or four nights ago, I watched The Greatest Night in Pop, oh. which is about um, when they made We Are The World, mm -hmm. the song. And it's so many people in there because I'm in my Quincy Jones bag right now. Nice. Like I'm reading Quincy Jones book again. I watched that documentary. I watched, he has another documentary about just him on Netflix. And I'm just watching how he was able to pull all these people together. But then in the documentary, it's like micro sections about Michael and how they got Sheila E and how they got nice. Bob Dylan and all of these different people. And I'm like, it just shows you that Michael was Michael, but it shows you this era of Michael, and then you got another era of Michael, then you got another era that we actually lived through and different things. So I love being able to watch that that journey. And then when I'm kind of like feeling like we're not getting fed a lot of teachings and stuff, I go back and watch old interviews. So nice. I watch Jay-Z interviews and see, mm. he said this 10 years ago and it happened, or mm. this didn't happen, or he felt this way back then. So it's easy to kind of time travel and find the inspiration 
more so than it is to actually find inspiration now, which is kind of sad. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I think that that's how it is, you know? Like, I feel like you always kind of have to go back to get some inspiration. Otherwise, you become a carbon copy of what's yeah. going on, right? And you TikTok trend. Yeah, and you want to keep it authentic to yourself and also, like, maybe get inspired. So I think inspiration is always one of those things where you just go back. You just yeah. go back in time. When did you feel like you had to kind of make a decision or a sacrifice that like, okay, if I'm going to do this for real and I've been on my mind my whole life about wanting to do this, hmm. I got to make this big leap. What was that first big sacrifice to say, I'm going to go do this? Um, well, I graduated high school with honors and I definitely could have went to college but i didn't want to so i talked my mom into giving me a year out of school there's a negotiation yeah and the year clocked out so i enrolled in college and then that's when i got the audition for empire boom go straight to empire which was a smash yeah um how empire kind of blends your worlds right so how do you decide now that you know i'm acting i'm doing certain things how do you decide when you want to go make music like in between yeah oh with empire it was like no time to do anything but i i definitely still made it work whatever time i had free i just went to the studio like if i didn't work a day or this day or that day i just went to the studio that's what passion is right yeah Pat, when you're passionate about something no matter what the rules are no matter what the time constraints are you're gonna figure out time to go do it yeah i just i just did it I don't know. It's crazy, but I did it. <laughs> so I have these, I have a, in every interview, I kind of play with passion and purpose, right? So I have my definitions of both. Okay. I feel like passion is what God wants you to do for you. Okay. Purpose is what, purpose is what God wants you to do for other people. Mm, yeah. So the passion feeds you, the purpose feeds the world. Yeah. How do you define passion? Well, that's beautifully said. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't know if Thank I can you. follow that up. Um, yeah, passion definitely is something that you're personally passionate about. Like, that's what you give your energy into. That's kind of what you probably dream. Like, they, what's your dream? What do you want to be? Who do you want to be when you grow up? All of those questions. I feel like that kind of along, aligns with your passion. Um, and you probably pick one of the things you're passionate about to, like, go with in life. Um, versus, yeah, purpose is definitely, I feel like, divine. So, it kind of aligns... I feel like your passion aligns with your purpose. Um, and so whatever you're passionate about usually is going to help bring your purpose to life. Um, and and I don't think one really can, I guess it could live without the other, but I feel like um, if one is very passionate about what they're doing, it's going to bring them purpose in that space. And sometimes you don't know it, right? Like, yeah, you yeah. start out on this journey to be the biggest artist in the world, the biggest actor in the world, the biggest producer in the world, and then you realize how that's impacting culture, and that kind of leads into your purpose. Correct. Because, like, now with us, you know, we've had the studio, we've had our studio for four years now, and, you know, I was in, in, in the entertainment industry before that. I managed artists um, who signed the Nas and different things, but yes. doing content and film gave me like this new outlet to kids mm. where it's like i used to think you're going to reach the youth with sports and that time has kind of changed now mm -hmm. so now it's like how do we present the right content to kids how do we show kids that they can be on set for these kind of things and i feel like that's my purpose now to march them into like this new era of not feeling like you you got to just go to, go to school and get a job or right. go to school and still not do things you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm big on education, but I just feel like we have to give them avenues. Yeah. So producing has helped me find new purpose, I guess. Yeah, I'm definitely an advocate of of it doesn't have to be entertainment sport. Like it can literally be anything, but I do think that in life you should be doing what you're passionate about um i feel like that's how you get the fuller side of life what is your most memorable night at work in any any of your many talents whether it's acting singing what is your most memorable night 
Memorable night. Um. I stumped her. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, hmm. I guess I would say. There's a, there's a couple that I feel like I was a little like, ah, I can't believe this is happening. Um, one of those, I would say, like, rehearsal with Chris Brown for Undecided. Uh -huh. um, I feel like working with him in any capacity was just like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. Uh, I just respect his craft so much. Uh -huh. um, another one would have to be... Um, working with neo on empire i think that was a big moment for me too because he was one of those artists songwriters that i really looked up to I love and neo. i still do right so it's like being able to work with him in the music space was like chef kiss yeah 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 so i i think those two really stick out to me right now um to be honest the first i mean on empire everything happened so quickly mm -hmm. um there's a lot that happened within those six years that was like a whirlwind six i feel like years just yeah yeah yeah. i feel like i was just kind of like in the middle of a like a tornado i i just was like there was just so much happening at once mm -hmm. and i had to um really i really understood after doing that experience i really understood the essence of being present mm -hmm. because so much can happen and you're not and even you're taking it in it, well yeah and there's so much to take in um but being present allows you to actually enjoy everything mm -hmm. um so so yeah there, there was a there's a there, that's why my mind when you ask that question i'm like gosh there's so many i like there's it, so many things there's so many moments that were like really cool um that were like very memorable but um I kind of have been able to adopt that that practice of being like everything's kind of memorable because yeah. now I'm like I take in every experience. Can you even pr plan or prepare for something like you going to the audition and getting Empire and being on there? For like, can't you you can't prepare for that, right? No. <laughs> and then I love that you use Chris Brown because Chris Brown is one of my memorable nights. So I was working in the medical mm -hmm. field. And I had this good job, making good money, and my mom was in the medical field. So I had this lineage of days, and I told my mom, hey, I'm going to quit the medical field and go open a production studio. I never picked up a camera before in my life. <laughs> and our first booking was Chris Brown's Go Crazy remix video. Whoa, wow. And, and it just feels like, you know, I was like, hey, mom, I'm going to go do this. We found a space. Yeah. The very first book, and we get Future, Mulatto, Chris Brown, Dirk, wow. Young Thug. Who else is in that video? I think that's it. And a hundred people showed up. We had no idea what was going on, but that was the night where I was like, oh, we could do this. Because if Chris Brown's video can come here and get executed, we could do anything. Right. And it's like you're saying you're, you weren't necessarily, you felt like you weren't the most prepared or yeah, the most knowledgeable. Not at all. And I think that that's what it's about. Like sometimes, um, Sometimes you just it's opportunity meets, you know, like divinity. It's like you mm -hmm. you're you're you can only do so much yourself sometimes that you're just waiting for opportunity. Waiting for opportunity. Um that doesn't mean do nothing, but <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like sometimes you just have to be in the divine space and timing that allows you to kind of like sync up with life's with, life. with life's like purpose or purpose for you. It's and purpose. um and I think that's just what happened. Obviously, I've done a lot of work in, on a smaller scale, right? But to be on that show at that time, I was like, there was no way I could foresee any of it. I, this is my first time. I was so green. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing. But it's also like one thing that I kind of pride myself on is if you treat people right and you try hard, things will happen. And then you'll figure out the way to go. A lot of people try to kind of plan everything out and they miss those two things. If you treat people right, like we wasn't prepared that night, but I had good friends. I had good relationships. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of people from, that was a 14 hour shoot. 
So imagine your first shoot being 14 hours and you trying to, it. you got <laughs> YSL on this side, you got futures people on this side. Mm -hmm. You you can't prepare for that. But everybody we called last minute was like, hey, I could do this. I got you on this. I That's got you on up. this. So last question. What fuels you now currently? Hmm. Uh, purpose. Definitely purpose fuels me now. Um, everything's about why am I doing it? If I'm going to do it, why do it? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's more than just opportunity for me now. It's about the message. It's about what it's for. What do we, how does it further, um, contribute to the bigger picture of the world? You know, it's like, how can I get in the space of contributing to the masses mm -hmm. that actually moves and shakes people, not just momentarily getting likes or momentary a viral, moment or viral. Yeah, yeah, like I, I'm in the headspace of wanting to be those legends that that really like move people's hearts and spirits and um, and change people's lives, right? Mm -hmm. So. There's, there's just so many. I, I'm very inspired because I, I just watched the Bob Marley. Yep, the movie. <laughs> movie. I yeah. still haven't seen it. It's, it's great, and I love that they got straight to the point. But you know, I, I think that he's, he was such a, a, um, purposeful perp uh, person mm -hmm. that everything he did was about the forward movement of, of love and unity. Right, that's his thing. So, I think it's about us all like finding what's our pay it forward, pay it forward. moment mm -hmm. and making the most out of that and i believe that i i definitely have been in the i'm in, of the generation now so there's a lot of pressures and there's a lot of things that come along with day-to-day -day move navigating through the industry um so all of that exists i'm not exempt from feeling any of it i feel all of it as well but it's I always try to remind myself that it's like, okay, what is Saraya about and, and what do I have to give and how can I pay it forward? So And take a breath. Yeah. Yeah. I think the beautiful part about your answer is you're in search of things that won't just benefit you. Right. And I think that's why it's going to work for you. And I don't just say that casually. I really believe you when you say it. So I really say it like I mean it because... I think you get so many people who, when you ask them kind of what their plans are, what's what's fueling them, a lot of times it's me, 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 or what somebody, what I didn't get, what I couldn't get when I was younger, what I want, and you're in search of how do I help people ultimately? Yeah, because I've I've done the work and it's all irrelevant. It's mm -hmm. all if it's just for you, like not to detour, but. Um, I used to think that all of those things bring you happiness and it's so cliche because we always hear rich people say it doesn't mm -hmm. and we're like, okay, girl. Whatever. Or, give okay, me the money and I'll... Yeah, give me the money and I'll see <laughs> yeah. if I become happy or not. Um, but I, I definitely can contest like at my, in my level of, of success, right? It was like I had the things that I thought that I wanted and I wasn't necessarily happy. So, and all the problems still existed. Yep. So I quickly found out that that doesn't help anything. Um, it, it, obviously it's how we survive, but, um, I think that on the bigger picture and bigger scale, it's not just about, um, me getting the things anymore. It's, it's more about the, the, the path is going to give me everything I need and I just need to trust the path. And trust the process. Yeah. And I think, you know, I tell people, and we can close on this, but I tell people my most miserable year was the year I got the most success. So I went from like $10 an hour to a six-figure job in one year. Yeah. It was the worst year of my life. Yeah, why? Because I realized everything was a lie. Like they tell you, hey, if you go get the good, good house and you go get the, you know, you can fly around and travel and do all these things and you can give money to your mom and all of these different things that you're going to be happy. And it's not saying that I don't enjoy those things, but Correct. I realized that, OK, now that I don't need for anything, I'm not feeding myself. I'm not feeding anything real. 
It was all these tangible goals that felt so far away. And then you get them fairly quickly and you're just like, so what else is there? What else is left? I was 25 years old. So at 25 years old, I'm like, yeah, well, what else is next? Same. So yeah, 25. It's an eye opener. I think 25 is like a trick. It's It's a trick bag for real. You wake up, you like, wait, it's a different world. (laughs) And and no, and people have to experience it. I don't care how many times you say it, how many times I say it, whoever, way more richer successful people cliche wise say it mm-hmm. people have to go through it to understand it yeah so truly truly thank you i really thank appreciate you. it i appreciate this and too. i plan to do this again in about five to ten years and we can talk about this interview period i love that let's, let's do, do it, it. All right. <laughs> muse of the month thank you